May God's peace and understanding that is way beyond what we can possibly comprehend keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. What a sight this must have been. The deafening roar of a tornado inside of this building where Jesus' disciples were meeting. The sun was shining. There were no clouds in the sky. His followers work, walk outside of the building, and, and they start telling people about Jesus, and they have fire on their heads, but it's not doing anything to harm them or burn their hair. They are speaking foreign languages, and they've had no training. Peter then says to the gathering crowd, You all put Jesus, your Messiah, to death. And now he has sent his Holy Spirit to be with us, and it has changed our lives. The people in the crowd were ashamed, and 3,000, 3,000 of them asked for forgiveness and were baptized. When God's Holy Spirit lives in us, we do become different people. Our attitudes, our opinions, and what we find important in this world, well, they all change drastically when God's Holy Spirit lives in our hearts. The older we get, we pick up bad habits, selfish hang-ups, prejudices, and addictions. And they typically do not disappear simply because we want them to go away. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can develop good habits, like studying scripture, spending time in prayer, helping others, having honest and open conversations with other Christians, and perhaps even working with professional counselors to gradually replace bad habits one at a time with good and healthy habits. God's Holy Spirit works in, with, and through us to make us more godlike and to help us live as God created us to live. So what new habits would you like to develop that will allow God's Spirit to continually work in your life and make you more Christ-like. This morning, our six Servants United Parish churches are again meeting online. We are putting protocols in place for gathering in our church buildings once we can do so safely. Although we have not been meeting in our church buildings, that does not mean our churches have been closed for the last two months. Church is not limited to what happens in a building. The body of Christ is connected and at work every time we pray, every time we give thanks to God, and whenever we check up on our neighbor, whoever that may be. Church happens whenever we show God's love and the good news of our risen Savior in our daily lives. So I encourage you to wear a face mask. Wash your hands often. Practice social distancing and show your love of God to your neighbor. Love and respect your neighbor by making sure that you do not give them any viruses or illnesses that you may be carrying. I have found no place in the Bible where Jesus teaches his disciples that they have the right to do whatever they want to do, and no one has the right to tell them any different. But there are many, many places in the Bible where Jesus teaches 
and shows his disciples how to love, how to respect, and how to protect our neighbor. And by the way, our neighbor is every person that we meet. So how can we resolve to become godly people and allow God's Spirit to go to work in us so that we truly can love our neighbor? How can you begin to clear the bad habits out of your life so that God's Spirit who dwells in you can work freely through you? Let me suggest three practices that you can follow this week to make it happen. First, every day, either read one chapter of the Bible, or read a devotion lesson, or listen to Dwayne Rolfs read a daily devotion on our Servants United Facebook page and website. Second, Follow that with five minutes in prayer. Just five minutes praising God, thanking God, and praying for others. And third, make up your mind to do at least one kind act each day. It does not have to be huge. It just has to be daily. If you will do those three things each day this week, you will feel the Spirit begin to come alive in you. That Spirit, God's Spirit, will begin to bless you. That Spirit will make you a blessing to your family and to everyone you meet. And then the miracle of Pentecost will become a reality in your life. Amen. We invite you to consider how God has continued to graciously bless you. As you consider how to continue to give and support your church during this time, while as a church we may think of ourselves as the physical location, we know more than that, we are so much more than our building. And while we're not gathering together to worship with one another during this time, the church's ministry is still continuing. We have been doing Sunday morning worship with you and Thursday evening Bible study at seven o'clock on Zoom and Friday morning women's Bible study on Zoom as well. While things are still happening, we may not be able to be together, but God's ministry and call is for us to live the gospel each and every day. So we invite you to take this time and send your offerings to the church. The offertory anthem has two possibilities for you. You can listen and enjoy the um, organ, and the beautiful music given to God, or the words are included and so is the sheet music. We invite you to sing along and make a joyful noise to the Lord during this day and the days to come.
join together in prayer. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small, but you make them in abundance, just as you do with our lives. Guide and direct us for service in your name, in strength of the risen Christ. Amen.